Tibbetts Point marks the entrance into the St. Lawrence River from Lake Ontario. The first lighthouse at Tibbetts Point was erected in 1827. Fueled by whale oil, the light remained in service until 1854, when the present tower was constructed. The steam-operated fog whistle was added in 1896. In 1927, it was replaced by an air diaphone, powered by a diesel engine with the blasts automatically timed. The air diaphone was later replaced by a radio beacon, which guides ships into the river. The fog whistle still works, but it is no longer used because residents of Cape Vincent and nearby Wolf Island complained that the noise shook their homes. The original lighthouse keeper, he usually uh, had to go up into the tower a couple times a day, uh, a.m. and p.m., refurbish the amount of fuel oil for the lamp so it wouldn't cut out in the middle of the evening and that, you know. He also had to polish the lens, the inside of the, uh, the lamp room or whatever, you know. His other duties was to keep the, uh, the properties clean, mowed, painted the buildings, whatever. It was a job where the, it was like what you would call a job that was like 24-7, and it kept them busy. They grew their vegetables. They did everything to be independent. In 1939, the Coast Guard officially took over the operation of the light. In 1981, it was automated. The lighthouse complex consists of the lighthouse tower, a two-story keeper's residence built in 1800, a steam fog signaling building with several displays, and an iron oil house. The keeper's house was a Coast Guard station up until 1981. It is now an American youth hostel, along with the assistant keeper's house built around the turn of the century. The tower is still an active light maintained by the Coast Guard. It has a fourth order Fresnel lens that can be seen from 16 miles out. At present, the lighthouse has the only classical Fresnel lens still in operation on Lake Ontario. It is the original lens and is over 150 years old. The Tibbetts Point Lighthouse Society, formed in 1988, has restored the light and constructed a visitor center and lighthouse museum, complete with gift shop. Between 10 and 12,000 people visit the center and lighthouse every year. It's definitely a landmark because a lot of these ships captains, they've, they've been on these freighters and uh, Great Lakes carriers for years and years. Even though they do have all the mechanical information and that available, they still use it as a benchmark for, for the lakes. Two additional lighthouses once graced the shores of Cape Vincent. The Cape Vincent Breakwater Lighthouse was one of two lighthouses built on a breakwater. At first, two temporary lights were placed on the breakwater in 1901. They were replaced with two permanent structures in 1904. Both exhibited a fixed red light. The keeper lived on the shore and rowed to and from the light station in a small boat. Despite requests for a dwelling to be built on the breakwater, no keeper's residence was ever constructed. Instead, a lifeline consisting of 7 8 inch steel line was placed between the two towers to provide the keeper something to hold on to in the event of heavy seas. The lights were in operation until 1951. The light now sits at the Town Highway Department on Route 12E. Now available on DVD or Blu-ray, the WPBS-TV production of New York Seaway Lighthouses. Featuring the fascinating histories of over 20 different lighthouses along the shores of New York Seaway Trail. Order your copy today. New York Seaway Lighthouses is sponsored by the Department of the Interior, National Park Service, and by Taste New York at the North Country Welcome Center overlooking the Thousand Islands Bridge.